You know, I'm um, very concerned not only because of the mayor's condition, but I'm concerned of the message that we're sending. We have gotten so much help uh, from all over the, the country and even the world in donating funds, um, reaching out to give um, donations to this effort. And we only ask that the council understands this and try to give us an opportunity to make this a better place to live. And um, I think that <coughs> with Diana's presentation, it will give us an opportunity to look at um, looking at this budget. Nobody likes to raise taxes. Not one person wants to raise taxes. It affects all of us. We all pay taxes in this room. And I think Diana will uh, make you, um, in this presentation, will show you. And we do not want to make cuts as well to provide services to the community. But we will work with whatever budget that is presented to this administration, at which, at which, um, which we have done for the past year and six months. Well, we will be accountable. You will be able to um, ask us any questions in regards to um, the funds of how we are spending the money. I really believe that every single director and deputy director in this county is doing a tremendous job for the people of this community and this county. We're fiscally responsible, and I, I, very, I have a confidence, utmost confidence, in what they're doing in their leadership roles. When they're asked to cut, we've cut. Asked to cut again, we've cut again. And now it comes down to just basically revenue. The property taxes that was lost in these three communities alone puts us in a different situation. It's affecting this economy. It's affecting the, the tourism industry. It's affecting jobs in this community. Let us look at the whole island as you vote today. It takes com commitment to the people that are in need. And I only ask you that to strongly consider 159. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Okabe. And um, Ms. Sako. Um, okay, good morning, Diana Sako, Director of Finance. Um, we do have a presentation, which I believe you have in front of you. Um, and so, you know, you definitely have two, op <coughs> excuse me, you definitely have two options today. One is to pass the bill and one is to, um, if it were to fail. And we just wanted to kind of give kind of what would happen. If it does pass, we would come back in to amend the budget. We would, um, the bill also establishes the GE um, general excise tax fund. So we would come in with that budget as well. But we would move mass transit, the operations that are currently in the general fund, and we would put them in the general excise tax fund and we would adjust general fund revenue to reflect the decline in real property tax um, revenue, and then we would be balanced, because that amount is 4.9 million, as you'll see on a later slide. And if the bill does fail, we'll have to adjust general fund revenues to reflect the decline in real property tax of roughly 5 million, and adjust general fund expenditures to reflect the decline in real property tax revenue. So if the bill fails, there's definitely going to be a budget impact. We're going to have to find $5 million in cuts, which is the same thing we talked about, you know, um, two weeks ago. Nonprofit grants would be reduced to $1 million as required by county code. Um, there would be no council contingency funds. We would unfund vacant positions, probably mostly those that have been um, vacant for over a year. Possibly no car allowance for elected and appointed staff. We would suspend non-mandated programs and services parks and recreation, festivals, programs, fee waivers. A lot of these things are not mandated by county code or charter. In planning, we would reduce funding for CDP, like clerical support. Maybe they wouldn't be able to meet as often. Um, we would look at the funding for Banyan Drive redevelopment, um, boards and committees, and then R&D, energy, immigration, business development programs. Um, a lot of those are not required or mandated by code or charter. Then the budget impact um, continued, sorry, reducing non-mandated programs or services, like, you know, would possibly closing pools and gyms certain days each week, deferring repairs and maintenance again, public works, reducing LBZ and unsafe floral, solid waste recycling programs would be reduced, 
um, reducing training opportunities, deferring equipment purchases, and possibly closing rural offices. And we would come back in with a budget amendment so we could talk about it. But again, these are the things that were not mandated by charter or um, code. Um, if the bill passes, there would be no additional reduction in programs and services. Um, Mass Transit would have the funding it needs to make its improvements and to implement the master plan. Road projects can be addressed, and we're talking about the larger road projects that need to be rebuilt or um, improved, and we'd have an additional source of revenue. We'd finally be able to diversify our revenues. Um, if it um, passes, this is um, a proposed budget amendment. This is similar to what we gave you when um, we first took up the uh, bill, whatever the number was, 102 maybe. Uh, but we would reduce general fund real property tax revenue by 4.9 million. And we would move basically all of the mass transit expenses in the general fund to that um, general excise tax fund. So that's the first 4.9 million. Our estimate of 10 million for general excise tax has to do, um, we believe the first half year will be 12 and a half million, but when the state charge starts charging it on January 1st, the collections would come in um, in January, the businesses would remit them to the state in February, and it usually takes the state yet even longer to get them to us, so we wanted to be conservative on the number. Um, in addition to Mass Transit's operations from General Fund, we would look at implementing parts of the Mass Transit uh, Master Plan. And again, this is back in February or March when we talked about the previous bill. Um, since then, the Mass Transit Plan Master Plan has gone out to public hearing. There's been discussion. So, you know, we're in agreement with SSFM and, you know, some of what um, she spoke about, Cheryl spoke about earlier today as well. But, you know, we do need more buses and equipment. They, need to, they do need to expand their routes to provide more services. They need to make capital improvements. Definitely they need to make technology improvements. People are looking forward to having an app, knowing where the bus is and when it will be coming, and then adding routes as well. <coughs> Excuse me. And then in addition, we believe it would give us enough funding to be able to design um, Ani Keo Hokalole uh, Phase 3. Uh, from Hinalani to Kaiminani. And that would be the um, $10 million um, where it would be going to. And again, this would be in a separate fund, the general excise tax fund for accountability. Um, the mayor has called me a couple times from the hospital to make be sure that we make a couple points. Um, one is he firmly believes this is not the time for government to be cutting services when people are most in need. It's the time for government to step up and provide additional services. And people are going to need additional services in Puna and around the island. Um, you know, uh, tourism is down. People are, you know, being laid off or hours are being reduced. So we do want to be able to, you know, provide help to those people as well. Um, in addition, um, you know, we just need the dollars to be able to respond to Puna. Um, and, you know, no one imp foresaw the $5 million reduction in real property taxes coming, but it is something we have to deal with now. So we humbly ask for your support. Um, we really do believe that government um, will help to me, needs to maintain stability in the community um, rather than decreasing right now during times of crisis.